Welcome to Calbekistan, a place where anybody can learn math. I'm Mr. Calbeck, and today we're going to start learning about proofs with episode one in our whole series on writing and doing proofs. We're going to start with the most simple kind that is going to be the most easy for you. It's called algebraic proofs. Let's get started. Many of you may have heard that proofs are this horrible, scary thing. Many geometry students dread them, uh, and you've heard, you've heard horror stories from you know, adults, and everybody else hates proofs. Hopefully today I can start demystifying the craziness that, is, that surrounds proofs. Uh, and we're going to start with this one. Okay. Now understand what a proof is. A proof is a math problem just like you've done in every other class. And you can see this looks really similar to algebraic problems you may have done before. The only difference between a proof, particularly an algebraic proof, and a regular kind of math problem that you're already used to is that you have to give a reason for every step that you take. Okay, and that's really important to understand the reasons. The reason that proofs are hard is because students don't know the reasons why they do things. If you've watched my channel at all, you know I love to talk about why things are true, why we're allowed to do things, and so proofs are going to be a natural outflow if you've already been watching my stuff for a while. Uh, if you haven't, I'd recommend uh, watching. I have a whole series talking about how to solve stuff like this, and we break down every step and why you're allowed to do different moves. I'll put a link in the description. So let's get started here. If you wanted to solve this, I think most people watching out there probably could. And let's go ahead and solve it real quick together. So I've got X's on both sides, and I have numbers on both sides. My goal here is I want to get all my X's on one side, all my numbers on the other, no big deal. I like to try to keep my X's positive, so I'm going to move this one instead of this one. I want to do the opposite operation, so I'm going to add 4x to both sides. And again, I'm hoping this is very familiar and relatively easy. You end up with 7x plus 2 equals 23. And now we want to go ahead and get uh, the x by itself. We're going to subtract 2 leaving us, again, 2 minus 2 is 0, so I just have a 7x, 23 minus 2 is 21. And then I have one more step to do. This is multiplication. I do the opposite of multiplication, which is division, which leaves me with x equals 3. Again, that looked pretty easy. I'm really hoping that you guys could do that. If you can't, again, take a look at that link in the description. So now, if we're going to do a proof, we need to have a reason for each step. Now, the easiest thing that you can always start a proof with is this part here. I wrote a problem down. Now, the problem is what the book or the worksheet or whatever it is, or your teacher, they gave it to you. So the only thing that you need to write down to, uh, in your proof to justify what you have done, a reason for what you have done, is you have to write the word given. So I'm going to write the word given here. Um, and again, that's all you have to do. This is not a, a difficult thing. In fact, you can almost, I, actually, I've never seen a proof where you don't start with a given. So always begin with a given because that's the thing that they gave you, right? So that's a really good reason for what we did. The next thing that we did is we added 4x to both sides. Now, in my class, we talk about the golden rule of math. And the golden rule of math just says, That's what you do to one side. You must do to the other side. All right, we've added 4x to both sides. So I've added, that's the, you can think of the golden rule as a big, um, it's, a, it's a summary of all of the rules that you can do in algebra. So one of the sub points of the golden rule is the addition property of equality. I've added the same thing to both sides. So we're gonna go ahead and write that down, the addition property of equality. Just means that I followed the golden rule with addition. Here, I subtracted two from both sides. Again, still following the golden rule. So what I'm gonna do there is I'm going to write the subtraction property of equality. Again, you're starting to get the idea here. Boom. All of these things have the word equality in them because it deals with what you can do to both sides of an equal sign. 
Lastly here, I have taken 7x and divided both sides by 7. I can do that because I've done it to both sides. And if you're guessing right now, I hope you're shouting at the screen what you think this is. It's the division property of equality. We're going to go ahead and put that in there. Now all that's left, we need a reason for this, but that's the only thing that remains. So you don't actually need to write a justification for the answer. But one thing that we like to finish our proofs with in math is this three-letter acronym. It's QED. It stands for Quad Erat Demonstrandum, and all that means is I have proven what I set out to prove. All right, this is what you're going to do in higher level math courses. You can impress your math teachers by finishing with QED because you have finished your proof. It's like, a, it's like writing the end at the end of a story. All right, and this is essentially all we have to do for an algebraic proof. I'm going to show you a slide here to show you all the different properties that you might use. Again, please, please learn these. Um, the thing that makes proofs hard isn't that the math is hard. The math is easy. You already, knew, you already learned it in other classes. The thing that's hard is actually taking the five minutes it takes to actually memorize these. So as you're watching this, say them out loud, the video, pause it, write them down in your notes. And we're going to take a look at this right now. All right, again, we've already used some of these, uh, but I just wanted to show you each step here. So we have the addition property of equality, and all that means is you can add the same thing to both sides, just like we did in our proof. The subtraction property of equality, same thing, we use that. You can subtract the same thing from both sides of your equal sign. The one we didn't use here is the multiplication property of equality. Just like we divided both sides, you can multiply the same number to both sides. Division, you can divide the same number both sides. Notice here, there's a little caveat. You cannot divide both sides by zero. And that's just a law of math. Dividing by zero does not make sense. We don't have time to cover that why in this video. But trust me, dividing by zero would destroy the universe. And you don't want to do that. Lastly, we have the substitution property of equality. And that just means... If I already know what something equals, so for example, if I know that x already equals 3 at the beginning, something who's told me that in the problem, you don't have to write that down. You can substitute in 3 for x every time you see an x. All right, there's a couple more here that we didn't look at, and we're going to use some examples to look at this later. But take a look at this one here, the distributive property of equality. Um, if you ever do a move in math where you simplify an equation, for example, I'm multiplying both things in um, with parentheses, that is the distributive property of equality. Um, some teachers will want you to differentiate between the sum and difference. It just means is there a plus sign, you use the sum distribution of equality or the difference if you have a subtraction sign in there. Um, most teachers won't even ask you to, to do that. They'll just say, did you distribute? Then you need to justify that with the distributive property of equality. There are a few other ones that we'll talk about in another video. But for, the, for algebraic proofs, these are the only ones you really need to know. Um, and we're going to go ahead and try another example here. All right, we have this problem written here. I need a reason for it. The only reason that you need is the word given. Remember, we always start our proofs with the word given because it's the problem that was given to us. It's not something you have to prove because it was. you can already assume that it's true. So now if I want to go about solving for R, probably the first step I would do on this is I would distribute the P into both. So P times R, we'll just write P R. P times one is P. And that still equals n. And again, my justification here is going to be the distributive property of equality. And again, you can put the word sum in there if you want to, if your teacher asks you, because there's a plus sign here. All right, the next step that I want to do, if I want to get r by itself, I need to get rid of all the other things here. So this is being added, this p is being added, so I'm going to subtract p from both sides. And hopefully from that slide, you remember that this is the subtraction property of equality. All right, the next thing that we're going to take a look at, uh, these cancel to zero, gives me P times R equals N minus P. Now we have one more thing left to do. This is P times R. The opposite of multiplication is division. So once again, we're going to divide by P on both sides. 
And again, that's the division property of equality. These will cancel out into a big one because anything divided by itself is one. And that just leaves you with R equals N minus P over P. And again, that's all that's left. You don't need a justification for your answer. But what I would like you to write, again, this will impress your math teachers, you're going to write QED at the end to say that your proof is done. The end. I have set out what I came to prove. All right, if you remember those few properties, and again, they all are under the umbrella of the golden rule of math, so hopefully it should be really easy to memorize. You're gonna be able to handle any algebraic proof that your teacher can throw at you. Uh, the ones that I've shown here are a pretty good example of what you're, you should expect to see. Uh, stay tuned next time. We're gonna start talking about some different kinds of proofs that are not algebraic, they are geometric.